So if I'm given a physical quantity with a number and a unit, and I don't like that unit, I know how to change it into the different number and the other unit that I want, just by multiplying by one a few times. But why would I prefer one unit over another? There are many reasons to do so. For example, as a unit of length, a rough isn't very good because there's no standard height for a Scottish Terrier, so it's very hard to check exactly how many roughs tall you are. And same with meows, it's very hard to stack cats to very high sort of piles, particularly above two or more. And so why would I change to different units? Well, sometimes I'd like the numbers to be reasonable. I mean, I could take a very, very tiny unit of length, like a micron and measure myself in microns, but I'll come out to be millions of them. And humans don't usually like carrying around really large numbers. You'll notice that when I started talking about three and a half million joules in a previous example, I convert it to megajoules because 3.6 is a kind of human sized number. I can think of three things or four things or three and a half, but three and a half million is just a little bit hard for me to conceptualize. And so we often change our units to try and make a more reasonable choice of number. The absolute easiest way to do this is to use the metric multipliers. So when we had 3.6 million joules, we already introduced the mega, mega joule. So mega anything is a million of them, or one with six zeros. We're familiar with a kilometer being a thousand meters, and indeed a kilo anything is a thousand anythings. There's also hecto for a hundred and deca for 10 and deci for a tenth. Probably the next most common one would be the centi. A centi something is a hundredth, e.g. a cent is a hundredth of a dollar. And we have milli, a millimeter is a thousandth of a meter and milli is a thousandth of anything. We also have micro and nano below that and giga and tera above that and many more besides. And once you know those and you know the symbols for these things, so giga is prefixed by a capital G and mega is a capital M and kilo is a little K, micro is the Greek symbol, so once you know those symbols, you can make up all sorts of units. Anytime you have a unit, you can always have a giga version of that unit, or a kilo, or a micro. So for example, we might have seen micrometers. So you know what a meter is, that's a micrometer, that's a millionth of a meter. You might know kilometers. You might be familiar with megahertz. A hertz is a unit of frequency, it's how many cycles per second. So a megahertz is a million cycles per second, or in terms of computers, you might have heard of gigahertz. You might have heard of centimeters. You might have heard of milliliters. You might have heard of nanometers. So many of those examples were meters. But in fact, all those things could work just as well for joules. You can have megajoules or microjoules, or you could have megawatts. You could have gigawatt power stations and so forth.